Hello, my name's Hannah. I'm the current occupational therapist at Oscott Manor School and I'm a youth mental health first aider. I just want to talk to you in this brief video about how we manage our feelings as parents when we're approaching change and transition in our children's lives. And I'll be talking to you as an occupational therapist, but also as a parent as well. It can actually feel more natural to concentrate on the negatives instead of the positive. It's what scientists call a negativity bias. Have you ever noticed how you can get five positive things said to you, but if you get one negative comment, it's the negative one that you remember and that you focus on. It's like an inbuilt, natural human thing. It's like our brain buzzes with more electricity over the negative than it does the positive. But knowing that, we can be more mindful and more aware that our brain naturally is going to focus more on the negative and so we have to make more of an effort to uh, fight against that and to look for the positives. There's this really useful part of your brain called the amygdala and it sits really deep inside your brain and it's what controls your fear response. Um, and this is really useful because in certain situations we need our brain to tell us that something is a threat and that we need to react quite instinctively and quite automatically um, so that we can flee. Um, it's the, our fight or flight response. But the amygdala reacts before the rational part of our brain can tell us whether there is or isn't anything that we need to worry about. So when we feel afraid, um, we get some news and we um, you, we get some news about change, for example, something's changing, something new is happening. And our first reaction to that can be fear before we gather the evidence and can make an informed choice about whether that is something to worry about or not. So that part of the brain is the amygdala. But we can override that by using strategies and tools to help calm us. And that will be different for each person. So it's worth thinking about when I feel that stress, when I feel that fear that starts to take us into the yellow zone, if we're, if we're thinking about the zones of regulation that we do at school, what can I do to manage that feeling and to bring myself back down? Um, breathing is one simple, quick, key thing that we can do. We can learn to breathe um, more calmly, more slowly and more mindfully. And there's some videos on YouTube, on the school YouTube account about that as part of um, sensory yoga and as part of the zones of regulation as well. We do a lot about breathing techniques. So sometimes when you have that automatic reaction of this is something I need to be worried about and scared about, we can try and override that um, physically with breathing, with relaxation, with exercise, so that we can then switch on the part of our brain that can think and problem solve and be rational about how big a problem really is this and that's sometimes you find that you react quite strongly to something and then once you people say oh I've slept on it and I feel better that's when the logical part of the brain has just had time to process it so sometimes our initial reaction is um, very amygdala based and we just need to give ourselves a bit of time to think more rationally about things and come up with solutions a lot of our worries actually start with what ifs and when we're not feeling rational um, 
we can find it hard to find the practical solutions to those what ifs and we're more likely to let that spiral into the worst case scenario that actually probably won't happen. So when we think of a what if, it's good to think of a solution to that what if. What if my child is separated from their best friend? Well, a solution to that might be I can make ways of them seeing that friend or contacting that friend regularly at other times and maybe they'll make a new best friend um, in this new circle. So it doesn't always end up being the disaster that we imagine it's going to be. Another useful technique is to think about what is in my control and what isn't. We spend a lot of time worrying about things that actually aren't in our control and we can't do anything about. For example, the current situation with lockdown and when the government are slowly relaxing that and new guidance comes out almost weekly and we can spend time worrying about well when when will this thing reopen when will I be allowed to do this when will this be normal again etc etc but the thing is we can't really control that um, and actually it's more productive if we think about that what can we control what can I do something about well I can think about what I need I can think about um, what makes me feel good, what makes me feel well, and I can put more energy into doing those things, whether that's having a regular phone call with somebody, um, whether that's exercise, whether that's having some time out each day to read, what, whatever it is that makes you feel better. Um, spending time on that and spending less time thinking about things that are just way out of our control. When we feel anxious and worried about things, it's really easy to dwell on that worry almost constantly and never arrive at a solution and just spend whole days and whole nights dwelling on things. So I really like the idea of a worry shelf this is where you can imagine in your head an actual shelf in an actual room. It can be at the bottom of the garden, can be somewhere completely away from your home. And what you do is you put that worry, which is perfectly um, allowed, you don't have to pretend that that worry doesn't exist, but you put that worry in a box and you go in your mind to that shelf and you put the box on the shelf and you say to yourself, I will allow myself to take that box down and to think about that worry for half an hour every day and no more. So you're not pretending it doesn't exist, but you're not letting yourself dwell on it all day either. It's something that you can pick up and put down when you when you want to and when you feel well enough to tackle it. Maybe you put it on the shelf and you don't think you don't look at it. You don't allow yourself to um, get it down for a few days if you're feeling particularly rough. It can be something that I'm going to I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to go back to it. Yes, it is going to happen. Yes, I do need to face it, but I need to separate it from being something that is all day, every day in my head. Um, and that's one that I would encourage our young people to use as well. Maybe it's about going back to school, okay? That's a legitimate worry. We don't want to pretend that that doesn't exist or that that isn't a valid worry. We're going to spend time talking about it, see if we can problem solve anything. Then we're going to put it in the box and we're going to put it on the shelf. 
and we'll decide when we go back to it and how long we're going to spend on it and hopefully that gives you some headspace and some time away from the worry. I really like this poster from Action for Happiness. 10 keys to happier living. Giving. Do things for others. Relating. Connect with people. Exercising. Take care of your body. Awareness. Live life mindfully. Trying out. Keep learning new things. Direction. Have goals to look forward to. Resilience. Find ways to bounce back. Emotions. Look for what's good. Acceptance. Be comfortable with who you are. And meaning. Be part of something bigger. If you'd like to look at more about this topic, here are some helpful websites that you could take a look at. It's worth just ending by saying our children need us to be OK in order for us to help them. So you need to look after yourself as a parent before you can look after anyone else. So take care and stay safe.